Whatever rots your socks, whatever spins your top Whatever winds your watch, whatever flips your flop Whatever turns you on, whatever flies your flag Whatever bangs your gong or whatever swings your bag Do it after but do it well Cause nobody knows and there's no way to tell When the ride ends Satu, Satu, Satu. Hi. I'm going to have to speak very quietly because this place has a tin roof and uh, my words really echo and ring in here. So I'm going to have to keep my uh, voice down. I'm at a, at a weird meditation center uh, here in Taimung, uh, Turtle Beach. Uh, it's sort of one-stop shopping site for all religious uh, iconography. There's probably about 200 uh, religious statues on this property. Uh, so people can come and whatever god you want to pray to, Hindu, Brahmin, Buddhist, dead kings. I suppose there's probably a couple TV ce celebrities around. Uh, you can come and pray here. You can also feed the fish, which is what I enjoy doing. They have a pond full of enormous catfish. Uh, and I like to see them uh, wrestle with each other for the little bits of food. You, you, you pay a little tin bot to contribute to the the uh the place it's not a monastery it's not a wat it's kind of a meditation center so it's always very quiet and still here and i like that very much so uh, i've titled this video uh, <laughs> the divorce guru because <laughs> of something that happened last week i want to share it with you so thursday uh, a week ago almost exactly a week ago uh no exactly a week ago uh, I was building some shelves with my friends Hans and Chamdan. We were building some new shelves in Boontong's studio. And uh, this guy shows up at my door. Big, good-looking guy, red hair, red beard, an American guy from the East Coast. We'll call him Bob. And he watches. He watches this channel a lot. So uh, I want to say off the top of the bat, Bob's a great guy. He's a very friendly guy. Smart guy, pleasant guy. I enjoyed the time I spent with him. Uh, but he's facing uh, a lot in his life right now uh, as sequelae of a, uh, a very terrible divorce. And he's seen all my videos and he was sitting on the East Coast. He'd never had a passport in his life. And he's gone through this terrible divorce. He lost his uh, uh, job, uh, a career, uh, had to sell his house and split the proceeds with his ex-wife, lost his wife, lost his children, lost his self-respect, got a drug habit, <coughs> has some legal issues he's facing, uh, might be facing jail time. So he had sent away for his passport and the passport came in the mail. And he said, if I don't use it, uh, I never will. And so he uh, 
drove his truck to the airport. He parked his truck in long-term parking, fully expecting it to be towed and impounded because he wasn't coming back. He was gonna go to Asia. He was gonna start at my front door and then maybe Vietnam, maybe the Philippines, but he's gonna start at Steve's front door because Steve's videos gave him the courage and the impetus to, to, to do this, to grab his passport, buy the first plane ticket he'd ever paid for in his life, take the first airplane trip he'd ever taken for in his life, flew to Qatar, flew to Bangkok, flew to Phuket, got in a taxi at the Phuket airport and drove straight to my front door. Hadn't slept in 36 hours. And he said to me, it was either come here or put my 12 gauge in my mouth. Very American thing to say. Uh, at any rate, I, 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 I did what I could. I got him a bungalow. That was, that was basically all I took him to dinner. Uh, that was all I could do. And I felt bad uh, because I felt like this guy was looking for something from me that he expected me to be able to provide uh, the answer the answer to that question that keeps us all up at night, three in the morning, staring at the ceiling when we go through a bad divorce. He'd seen that I found my bliss. I found my Turtle Beach, man. And for the past year, I've been happy every single day of the past year. Whereas I could not tell you two consecutive days I was happy in the 25 years that came before a year ago. Here, every single day, I'm happy. I can come sit here and feed these fish for an hour, <clears throat> be happy as a clam. So I had nothing really to give this guy and I felt bad. Uh, he, he was looking for something, he looked to me to help him find that something and I was completely incapable of doing it because I have no advice to give you. Uh, if you've gone through a terrible divorce, my sympathies go out to you, my brother or sister. It's not easy for either side, I know it. <clears throat> and I have come out the other end relatively intact. It took a lot of time and it took, you know, eventually retiring and coming to Thailand. But I can't tell you to find a deserted beach where nobody speaks English, buy an old, re or rent an old restaurant, an old sushi restaurant, and spend your days playing with dolls or building giant styrofoam turtles. I, I guarantee you probably won't enjoy that. It certainly won't satisfy you in your retirement. Whatever your needs are, they are not <laughs> Barbie dolls and a giant styrofoam turtle. Mine are, you know, I'm like I said, I'm happy as a clam, but I can't give my happiness to you and I cannot direct you to it. Maybe all I can do is provide an object lesson, encouragement that, yeah, you can come out the other end of a divorce. You can let go of the bitterness. You can let go of the anger. You can let go of the self-loathing, the embarrassment, the shame. The debt, the lawyers, you can come out the other end of that, a better, stronger person, a happier person. Now, weirdly, the sun has come up over these trees and the contrast, uh, the bright light is making it darker on the screen. That's pretty amazing. So that's it. I just want to tell you, uh, if you're looking for that at this channel, if you're looking for the divorce guru, I'm not him. Uh, I'm just a guy who went through what you're going through. <clears throat> Excuse me. My divorce had every bad feature of a divorce. Anger, uh, intentional inflicting of pain on both sides, children damaged in the process. I went through all of that. Uh, explaining yourself in court, trying to justify why you have the right to parent your own children. And now that the sun's up, the mosquitoes are coming out. So anyway, I'm sorry if you're disappointed. Uh, I, I can't provide anything more concrete than an object lesson. Uh, hang in there, you know, hang in there. It's trite, it's a kitten on a poster on an office wall, right? Hang in there. But do, don't put that 12 gauge in your mouth. Get them out of the house. <laughs>
If you have to, get all the sharp implements out of the kitchen. I went through that phase. I had to take all the knives out of the kitchen for a little while. Maybe you will too. But at the end of it, <clears throat> there's thousands of amazing sacred uh, carp in a pond in a meditation center. And it's there waiting for you. You know, I walk the beach twice a day and I'll pick up a, a handful of sand and think every single grain of this is millions of years old. It's been sitting on this beach waiting for me my entire life and a million years before and it'll be there a million years after I leave. Each little grain of sand is unique and each one has been there on that beach waiting for Steve Ross to come and contemplate it for millions of years. I don't remember why I brought that up. There was something to do with the beach and walking on the beach. Uh, but at any rate, <coughs> you know, the world's millions of years old and it'll keep going after we leave. Nobody will remember, even 50 years from now, nobody will remember your divorce. The lawyers won't remember it. The judge won't remember it. You'll be gone. Your spouse will be gone. To the children, they'll try actively, I assure you, to forget. Nobody will remember even 50 years from now, let alone a million years from now. All right, this sun is bugging me and these bugs are bugging me. I'm going to tell you a little, uh, give you a little caveat. The only piece of advice <laughs> that I have, <clears throat> there's a thing called the funeral scam. It's a very common trick that bar girls and other stripes of professional sex workers uh, will play on a, uh, a, a, a naive client. You know, because funerals are public events in Thailand, one of the things you do as a family at a funeral is display to the public your profligacy and your piety. So it's a free lunch for anybody. Anybody can come and have a free lunch, light a, light a stick of incense, have a free lunch. And then if you want, you can have your picture taken in front of the casket with the big photograph, framed photograph of the deceased. So what somebody will do if she's got a sucker on the line is she'll go to one of these public funerals. They, they typically, the lunch will be served one day, three days, or nine days, as far as I know. Uh, so in most towns, you can find a funeral, public funeral, any day of the week, because they go on, like I said, for three days or nine days. And people die all the time. All of us eventually will be the subject of a, of a uh, requiem. And so you can go and you can uh, take a picture in front of the casket and the bereaved and the, 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 the deceased. And then you can go to the sucker and you can say, look, look, I just found out my, my, my mommy died, my daddy died. And of course, whatever the photo is, an old man, an old woman, a child, a young person, that's your cousin, that's your niece, that's your father, your mother. Oh, my darling, I'm all alone in the world now. Uh, my mother was the only person I had. My sister was the only person I had. And if I don't come up with 20,000 baht, they won't burn the body. They'll bury it in a pauper's grave. I've got to come up with 20,000 baht. Do you like that? Can I borrow your money? 20,000 baht? <laughs> and there's a variation of it. Uh, well, there's probably a lot of variations of it. Typically, when I get that communication, it used to come in an airmail letter, a red, white, and blue airmail letter. Uh, now it comes via line. And uh, when I get that, I know that's the end of the relationship. That's, that's, you know, once the other person starts playing these games, then it's no longer a straight up, honest, transactional relationship. Now it's somebody trying to <clears throat> take advantage of somebody else, and, and that kind of sours it for me. Uh, and I bring this up because... Uh, uh, yesterday I got a, a line message, uh, a photograph of a child in a hospital bed. And uh, my daughter is sick. My daughter has influenza. I need money for the hospital bills. And I think that's, that's, I don't know if it's a picture of an old person, my mother's dead, my father's dead. For some reason that is easier for me to forgive than a picture of a child. Uh, but at any rate, uh, yeah, uh, once somebody starts sending you pictures of children in hospital beds, <clears throat> yeah, for me, that's it. Go look somewhere else. Uh, all right, so that's it. That's 12 minutes. 
as always, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching this. If you've watched all the way through, I really appreciate it. You are my brother or my sister. If you're going through a, a hard divorce, you've been through a hard divorce, you are my kindred spirit. And I applaud you. I applaud you, your strength. If you survived, if you're surviving, you're strong. <clears throat> I admire you. And to everybody watching, I love you. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week for a Boontongs video. Bye-bye. It occurs to me, uh, I didn't tell you the end of the story about Bob, the guy who came to seek my uh, wisdom. Uh, first of all, I, I forgot to mention, he brought me this. He gifted me, I think it's a gimbal. I have no idea what it is or how to use it, but it looks expensive as hell and, and brand new. And he just brought it all the way from America on the first airplane trip of his life and, and gave it to me. Uh, anybody know how to use it? Let me know. The end of the story of Bob is that he, uh, he was here for two or three days and I took him to dinner and I talked to him and he was getting kind of more antsy every time I saw him. And uh, it turned out that he had been taking some meds and he had gone off his meds when he got on the airplane. And he was in withdrawal. And I said, well, I'm, I'm going to Phuket for three days to shoot a grumpy old man video. Why don't you come with me? I'll put you in a hotel in Batong Beach. If you gotta go through withdrawal, I mean, it's gonna be better than being alone in a, in a bungalow on Turtle Beach. And he said, no, no, I'm too twitchy. I don't want to try. I'm just going to stay here and go through it by myself. I'm going to cold turkey by myself. So I go for three days to Phuket. I don't hear from him. I text him. He does not respond. And when I came back, I went to the bungalow and said, where'd the big redheaded headed go? And they said, oh, he left the morning after you went to Phuket. He left. So finally, he answered a text. He had, uh, he couldn't stand it. He was in withdrawal. He needed his meds and, and he went back to uh, get his meds and face the music. Like I said, he's facing jail time. Uh, he's got a lot of work to do. And uh, I wish him all the best of luck in the world. And I'm sorry he had to pay for an airplane ticket to Turtle Beach and back for no benefit that I can see except some very uncomfortable days going through withdrawal on a dinky little village in a, on the Andaman coast. But anyway, that's the story of Bob, <clears throat> and that's the funeral scam. And again, thank you for your attention. I love you. See you next week. This is my favorite. That's the kind of master I would follow if I was the kind of person who would follow a master. So each one is a different monk, of course.
Each one of these guys is holy to hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people. No matter who your particular monk is, chances are good he will be represented here. Gods, demons, demigods, dead kings. Whoever you like, he's here somewhere. A monk with a beard. I've never seen that before. A monk with a beard and a mustache. A goatee? Is this a goatee or a Van Dyke? I think it's a Van Dyke. How about that?
whatever shades your chic, whatever bakes your glam, whatever digs your peak, whatever smokes your ham, whatever blows your nose, whatever chews your bone, whatever squirts your hose, whatever sings your song, do it after my do it well. Nobody knows and there's no way to tell. When you ride and it's that tree be doing down to the doobie yep, a boo ya do naggy. A cheer lip, a shoe yep, a shoe yep, shoot down to the dead dandoo. 